Hey, this is Anthony's Revzilla. We watch Decide and Ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new LS2 Stream Helmet available at Revzilla.com. New for 16, this is the LS2 Stream. I would classify this as a great entry level, more universal but sport oriented helmet. If we look at it, you're just in around or just over the $100 mark. There's a lot of helmet here. DOT, ECE, three pounds, nine ounces, drop down sun visor, and a partridge in a pear tree. It does a lot. Now, will I say that it's over the top and blowing me away for the price? No, I think that it could vent a little bit quieter, it could vent a little bit better. It's going to have limited clearance for speaker pockets, but I'm gonna get into some of that. All in though, for what you're investing thing here to think about a universally oriented sport helmet that the biggest key call that I haven't mentioned yet is that it's long oval. This is a rock solid option. So let's talk about long oval for a second. This is going to allow probably 90% of you to stop watching the video. This helmet is long oval in its head shape. My head shape is not going to be long oval. I am an intermediate oval head shape. So I'm a little bit longer front to back. This helmet is thinner, longer, and more narrow. So at the high end of the spectrum, we have something like the Arai Signet Q. At the more entry level level of the spectrum, we're going to have something like the Icon Alliance, which is long oval. But that's about a 50 or $60 more. This guy's around that $100 mark. So remember, if you're intermediate oval like my helmet or like my head, this isn't gonna work that well for you. If you're round, forget about it. You're not even gonna get close to this helmet. So keep that in mind. Remember, ship free over 39 bucks if you're concerned about the fitment of the helmet. And as always, click our logo, subscribe to us, leave us your comments, your questions, your feedback on the LS2 stream on our YouTube channel at Revzilla. But again, this theme here is if you're not a long oval and you'll know it if you are, you can stop watching the video. Now, if we look at some of the other things that are working really well on this helmet, again, Handful of vents here, your polycarb, three pounds, nine ounces, is considerably light. You are gonna be DOT and ECE, and I love the fact that they gave you the drop down sun visor, because again, you don't now have to carry that extra dark smoke. And you'll see here too, as we work our way through, that you do have these posts for the Fog Fighter, which is going to be really their version of Pinlock. You can buy it separately, and it's going to be Fog Fighter ready, which is a really nice touch. Now, starting at the shell and working our way in, reasonably light, polycarb. If we get into the vents, is one of the things that I don't like, and I don't like the vents for two reasons. One, one, it is around a $100 helmet, but the vents are a little bit cheap in the materials they use to construct them. Again, I can only dock them so many points, they're not charging you $200 here. But my bigger issue is they're smooth and slick, and they're gonna be harder to find with a gloved hand. So again, venting on top, not blowing me away, but not really disappointing me, but again, if you know where they are, it'll take you a little bit of time to get the hang of them, depending on the beefiness of the glove you might use. Also, when we look at this chin vent here, the chin vent, isn't going to be the highest quality chin vent. But again, it's an entry level helmet, so I'm gonna give that to it. That's what it has working for it. When you get into the shield mechanism here, it is a solid shield mechanism. Ultimately, you have a decent gasket that's going to move up and around the top and bottom. You can see how it's framed out for really this full visibility fog fighter lens here with these posts that I already talked about. What I don't like about the shield is there's no detent. There's no city position. I don't have a couple detents to allow you to adjust where it sits. It's either open or closed. And I'll tell you, to get the center locking mechanism to work, you have to push it down kind of hard. Now it kind of catches. If I do it gently, there's no way for me to get that to lock into place. It might break in over time, but in the time that we spent for it, we found that you had to press it down pretty hard to get it to lock in. It's also not going to be one of those mechanisms that sucks the shield back when it goes down. It's just very simple in its design. Now, the drop down sun visor as we look at it, it's going to be fog free, it's anti scratch actually works really well. I like where it's situated and it's smooth. It's cable, cable actuated. So that works really nicely. And if we look at it, you can even see they have that area of different density here in the cheek pads where you can put your eyeglasses. So it is a very full featured helmet. If we work our way around to the back, you're going to see it's a passive vent here in the back. You can't open and close it. It's going to pull warm, moist air through the helmet. Air goes in through the front, vacuum in the back, pulls that air out. That's called the Venturi effect. That allows your head to stay cool and comfortable as you're riding. And one of the things I do like about it is the aerodynamic profile. It's not overly aggressive and sporty, but it's not your grandmother's pearls either. What this helmet is, is going to be reasonably tech savvy with an aggressive feel to it, but whether you're riding in the upright riding position, the three quarter or the tuck, again, it's not getting in the way of itself. It's sporty enough to be sporty without being overly aggressive. So I am a fan of what they've done there. Now, if I turn it on its side, let's start to deconstruct some of the guts here. And remember, if we look at the bottom here, there's some polarizing things. First thing is not polarizing. I like that they did reflectivity in the back. Again, you're gonna be in the three quarter tuck. Somebody's gonna see you from behind. That's a nice touch. The way the neck roll is constructed is is going to be very soft, but to remove it is a little bit harder. So remember, as they've done these, they've used 
I'm pulling this guy out here. They've used these pins that slide into the front. They're a little bit harder. I've seen other manufacturers do that. I'm still waiting for them to tell me the easy way to do it without bending them as I pull them out. We have to figure that out. But again, high quality materials here. I actually like it. It's, it's going to be synthetic leather, but I like the fact that they gave you the reflective pop. Now, if we work our way into the interior guts, now we're gonna have our cheek pad mechanism. And what you're seeing me do here is I'm pulling it out over the micrometric ratchet. Now, cheek pad's gonna be contoured. Remember, different density up there where the eyeglass would go. And you see the cutout for the ear. Now the cutout for the ear does have a cutout in the helmet, and that's where your speaker would go with the Bluetooth device. Two things about Bluetooth. One, it's that long oval shape, so it's gonna be tighter and narrower. You're gonna have less room for a heavier or a bigger speaker. Just know that going in. You can't get a thick speaker with this helmet. The second thing about Bluetooth, if we go past the cheek pad for a second, notice that it has this ridge along the side. You're probably gonna have the best success using a sticky mount with a helmet like this. Now it isn't a heavy plastic. It's more of a rubber, so that rubber should conform to a clamp mount if you want to go there, but you are going to be compressing that neck roll or that rubberized gasket. Keep that in mind. Now, the other thing I just called out as we're working our way through is notice they do have the micrometric ratchet. This is something in Europe that's very popular. In the States, some guys like it, some guys and gals don't like it. Again, it's personal preference. It is a one finger release. You can see how that works there. It's a high quality design, but at the end of the day, it's not a double D ring. So make that decision before you go into this and understand what you're buying. Pull out the other cheek pad. You're gonna see how that all works as I deconstruct it here. And as we start to work towards the front, you're gonna notice they have that quilted design. It's done in pleather in the front here behind your chin bar. And as I pull it out, you can see, once you pull the neck roll out and you pull the cheek pads out, your comfort liner comes out pretty simply. So I'm gonna pull the comfort liner out. Not the beefiest comfort liner I've ever seen. There's basically no snaps that are gonna come in contact to your head. No forehead, no occipital snaps here in the back. Big open areas for airflow. Again, it's basic. It's done well for around the $100. It's a rock solid helmet. And if I open the helmet up, notice you're using a bit of 3D mesh to coat the inside of the lid to keep things in place. And you can see that the vents are going to be on top and behind that. Again, not the most aggressive shell cutout scheme here on the EPS, but it will flow air. Again, all in, a lot of features on this helmet. You're going to have your speaker cutaways, your drop down sun visor. You do have a high quality shield mechanism. Again, I've talked pretty honestly about my issues with the helmet, but you have to take it with a grain of salt for two reasons. One, because it's my opinion, and two, because for around the $100 mark, which I've talked about incessantly in this video, you can only dock them so many points when you're gonna see other manufacturers come out with a helmet that might be 150 or 200 and could be in the same range of features here. So again, I like the fact that they're able to save you money, but again, you're not getting a Rolls Royce, you're not even getting a BMW here. You're going a little bit more economical with this LS2 stream. Keep that in mind. You can step up to other helmets in their line. There's a ton of them, and they begin to round out some of the more quality-centric features as you go up in that two or $300 mark. Now, the next step in your journey is to click the info button, your desktop, your mobile device. Visit the product detail page at RevZilla.com. Read other rider reviews of the LS2 stream. You shouldn't just take my word for it. As always, we'll ship for free over 39 bucks. If you want to talk to a gear geek, see us at RevZilla.com or 877-792-9455. Thanks for watching our detail break. Don't remember to subscribe to us at Revzilla on our YouTube channel. Stay up to date with our opinion of the latest and greatest in the Moto Universe. I'm Anthony. We'll see you next time.